everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to talk about Math 100, Section 1.2. We'll start off with some definitions. First, we have constant. A constant is a fixed, unchanging value. And some examples. The number 7. It's always the number 7. How about pi? That's a constant too, right? Pi is always 3.141592, so on and so forth, right? The square root of 2. You might not know the square root of 2 off the top of your head, but it's always going to be the same number, right? It's fixed and unchanging. Whereas a variable is a symbol used to represent an unknown value. Examples, in math, we love to use the letter X. Um, the reason for that um, tends to be because X is the least popular alphabetic letter. It shows up in the least number of words, right? It stands out on its own. Um, other common numbers are N, good number for a number, right? Sometimes we'll use A, whatever letter you want. You can use any symbol. You could use a drawing of a cartoon fish as your variable if you wanted to. You can use any symbol as long as you're consistent in using that symbol, right? And then an algebraic expression is a combination of constants, variables, operations, operations being plus, minus, times, divide, exponents, our various mathematical operations, and or grouping symbols. Grouping symbols. An algebraic expression is a combination of constants, variables, operations, and or grouping symbols. It does not have an equal sign in it. That makes it an equation if it has an equal sign. And we'll have that definition in a moment. So let's take a look. Evaluate each expression by letting x equal 5. When we evaluate, we plug in. So I have 8 plus x. That is going to become 8 plus 5 when I plug in 5, right? x becomes 5. And hopefully we all know 8 plus 5 is 13. Now how about this next one? 8x. When I plug in the 5, what operation goes here? Hopefully everyone had the idea that it's multiplication. 8 times 5 is 40. Remember, when we don't write the operation in between, it's considered to be multiplication. That's a shorthand mathematicians like to use. Next, 2x minus 9. Well, that will translate to 2x, so 2 times 5, minus 9. And then that equals, do I multiply or subtract? I multiply first. 10 minus 9, which gives me 1. Now this one, 3x squared. Is the squared affecting the 3 or just the x? It's only affecting the x. This is 3 times 5 squared. I plug 5 in for the x. The squared only goes on the 5 though. It does not go on the 3. Because now when I apply my exponents, I get 3 times 25, which gives me 75. If I wanted the squared, the exponent, on the 3, I would need parentheses. Notice 3x squared is 3 times x squared, whereas 
x parentheses squared is 3x times 3x. Notice the difference, right? If I want to square both values, the 3 and the x, I need parentheses. I need to group them with a grouping symbol. So be aware of the difference between parentheses and not parentheses. Makes a, big, a little bit of a difference, right? Whether there's two threes or a single three. So that's evaluating expressions. Now, what if there's more than one variable? Can we work with more than one variable? This says evaluate each of the following for x equals 5 and y equals 3. Well, when you have two variables, you plug in the value for the appropriate variable into those variables. So, 2x plus 5y. Well, when I plug in 5 for x and 3 for y, x becomes 5, y becomes 3, I get 2 times 5 plus 5 times 3. I need to multiply first, right? Multiplications come before additions. So I need to multiply to get 10 and 15 before I add them to become 25. How about in the next example? We have a big fraction, right? Whenever we're dealing with big fractions, we need to treat them like grouping symbols, right? So first, let me rewrite the problem. And then plug in. It gives me 9 x is 5 minus 8 y is 3 over 2 x is 5 minus y is 3, right? Now, treat the top and bottom separately. So in the top, what's the first thing I do? Multiply or subtract? I always multiply first, right? I'm going to get 45 when I do 9 times 5, and 8 times 3 is 24. In the bottom, in my other group, in the bottom group, I multiply before I subtract as well, right? So I get 10 minus 3. Now in both the top and the bottom, I have subtraction. In the top, I get 21. In the bottom, I get 7. And things are looking good because 21 over 7 reduces to plain old 3, right? That divides evenly. Always nice when that happens, when you can divide evenly. So notice, first we assessed the problem, then we plugged in, then we worked through our order of operations to reduce the answer into its final form. Now for the third example, x squared minus 2y squared. Be careful that you know the exponents are on which corresponding uh, values. x squared will be 5 squared minus 2 times y squared, right? Got to make sure I remember there's a times in there. The first thing we're going to do is apply our exponents. 5 squared is 25. I still have minus 2 times 3 squared is 9. So I applied my exponents. Next, do I subtract or multiply? Subtract or multiply? Multiply, right? 25 minus 18, which gives us a final answer of 7. So we follow the order of operations on all of these problems. We'll always be following that same order of operations. Now, equations. What are equations? Equations are statements of equality between, I abbreviated between, two expressions. Equations are statements of equality between two expressions. An equation says these two things are equal. What about a solution? A solution is a value or values for the variables 
that makes an equation true. It's the values you can plug in to make an equation true. We'll take a look at that in just a moment to see what are solutions. How about, what does it mean to solve an equation? Is to find the solutions. And we won't be solving equations right away. We'll just be checking at first. We'll get to solving equations, don't worry. But for now, we'll just be checking if things are solutions. So check if things are solutions. Let's take a look at that. The equation in question is 5p plus 1 equals 36. 5p plus 1 equals 36. And the solution I'm checking is p equals 7. So I will plug that in. 5 times 7 plus 1. And I like to write equals with a question mark over it. Because I'm checking, right? I put a little question mark so I know I'm checking. 5 times 7, 35 plus 1 equals question mark 36. Yes. 35 plus 1 is 36. P equals 7 was a solution. Yes, it is. It is a solution. Yes. P equals 37 worked out. How about our second example? Let's take a look at that one instead. We have 9m minus 6 equals 32. And m is going to be 14 thirds. Whenever I see a fraction in a non-fraction problem, I immediately turn the numbers to fractions. So let's plug in 9 over 1. How did I know it was over 1? Well, that's how you turn 9 into a fraction. Times m is 14 over 3 minus, and I'm going to leave the 6 alone for now because I don't know what this equals yet. It might happen to multiply to a nice even whole number, right? And then I don't need to turn the 6 into a fraction. So I'll leave it 6 for now. I could put 6 over 1 if I so chose. And then I'm going to put a little equals question mark, 32. I got to perform this multiplication. 9 times 14 is 126 over 3 minus 6 equals question mark 32. Now, from here, I'm going to go over here. This fraction, 126 over 3, does that reduce? Turns out it divides perfectly evenly. 126 over 3 is the same as the whole number 42, because it divides evenly. We can always double check with our calculator if we want. 126 divided by 3, 42. Always good when the technology agrees with us, right? Minus 6 equals question mark 32. Is 42 minus 6 32? No. This was not a solution. So we had one that was a solution and one that was not a solution. So it's always important to check to determine whether things are or are not solutions. And that brings us to the end of section 1.2. Thank you all for joining me, and I will see you next time.